Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome. Um, welcome to this uh, special episode of uh, Contemporary Music Talks. It's, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately today we don't have a guest, but I decided to do um, the live stream anyway, because, uh, yeah, because I skipped the, the last two ones, so <laughs> for a reason or for another, uh, yeah. I decided to to have these live streams um, even without a guest, and uh, I decided to talk a little bit uh, about um, one of the topic uh, that I'm most used to in uh, contemporary electronic music, and of course the topic, as you can read up here, it's no input music. So in today's uh, episode, uh, we are going to listen to a couple of examples uh, and discover a little bit more the um, scene of no input musicians uh, and all the different type of styles that that this technique um, can lead to. Um, of course, we will listen to examples. We will talk about uh, some of the main themes connected with no input music, uh, like for example, you know, the use of feedback, uh, um, the use uh, of um, of um, instruments that are not supposed to be used in that way. Uh, so we will discover some connection, of course, with circuit bending uh, and. Um, with a philosophy related to to reuse and of course there are a lot of implications in this um, in this topic and then we will discover how many different styles you can um, you can adapt as a as a no input uh, performer so we are going to talk about uh, performance and improvisation and uh, composition uh, with no input techniques. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it, it will be a kind of, um, you know, very wide um, episode of Contemporary Music Talks. And of course, everything is open to your questions in the chat. Uh, I'm also here to answer to your question, not only about what we are going to listen, but also about uh, some specific themes or um, techniques connected to no input music, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, feel free to, to interact in the chat and to ask questions and to share your opinions and ideas, obviously. Uh, hello, Jem. Hello. Welcome. So yeah, um, um, today we start with some examples because hello Pilbug, hello hello, with some examples because I, I want to first of all to to show you how many different uh, declination of uh, no input music are out there. Uh, most of you probably knows my work uh, with no input music, but of course there are many, many different ways of approaching this technique and using it in a compositional situation. Um, so I think the first example and the most... Um... Hello, hello, Stipples, hello, and welcome, and also thank you for the following. Super appreciated. Uh, the goal is to reach, as you can see, I don't know, he, 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 here, is to reach... Uh, 50. Oh, Hindrek. Oh, okay. Hello, Grumo. Hello, Hindrek. Hello, hello, hello. Um, the goal is to reach 50 followers because uh, of Twitch affiliation program and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, thank you for the following. It's super appreciated. Um, let's move on and let's see. Okay. Here we are. So, the first example that we are going to listen today. It's um, from Toshimaru Nakamura, No Input Mixing Board. Um, it's the first album, I think, uh, with this title. Um, but yeah, he released also um, other ones. 
Toshimaru Nakamura is a Japanese musician. So a lot of the music that uh, we will listen uh, from this album uh, has a certain type of aesthetic and uh, of... Um, well, I don't want to spoil too much. So we are going to listen to a couple of pieces of, of compositions and then we will talk a little bit about it and about uh, what's in this specific way of working with no input music. Um, Toshimaru Nakamura, No Input Mixing Board. Uh, this is an album from, I think, um, I don't remember the, the year. I need to check it out, uh, but I will do it uh, while we listen to it. Toshimaru Nakamura, No Input Mixing Board.
well, we can leave it in the background. Um, so yeah, as you heard in this first listening, this is a very minimal approach to no input music. Uh, well, probably in this case, yes, he found uh, a sound that he, he think it was interesting and um, he just recorded it and uh, of course there are some effects added and some variations uh, on, the, on the basic theme, but the overall approach of Toshimaru Nakamura is very minimalistic. And of course, if you, um, if you listen to other releases uh, in his, um, in his discograph discography, you can discover, yeah, that there is this super clean and precise minimalistic approach uh, to composition with no input mixers. Um, I find this thing uh, really... Japanese in a certain way, um, you know, this uh, very clean and precise uh, aesthetic vision. Um, yeah, I really love his work because it's uh, it's one of the masters of no input uh, mixing boards. Uh, and yeah, of course, uh, one of the first, I think one of the first that... Uh, based uh, his whole work on uh, no input mixers um, and no input mixing boards. Uh, I think uh, this is the first album of a series called No Input Mixing Boards. So, And all the tracks are named like NIMB, which is the acronym of No, no Input Mixing Board. NIMB 1, NIMB 2, NIMB 3. Yeah, as you can see here, NIMB 2. Then there is number three, etc., etc. So every album is a sort of uh, continuation of um, of the previous one. Um, but also, yeah, this is uh, one way of um, using no input techniques. Um, it's a composed way, so uh, he uses always the same uh, kind of setup. Yeah, it's super organized, actually. As you can hear in the background, for example. Yeah, it's, it's very minimalistic and uh, and also it's super fascinating uh, to me. Yeah, it's organized chaos. Exactly, exactly. Also because uh, um, if you are not used to no input techniques, uh, usually they are um, chaotic. Uh, because uh, basically you are forcing your electronic instrument um, to to do something that it's not really think to do uh, and built to do actually so yeah you are using it in an uh, an appropriate way uh, but also of course you are discovering some new possibilities into the instruments and this is one of the main themes when we are talking about no input mixing techniques and no input music in general um, you are working around the objects and you are trying to find a new meaning into objects a new meaning that is not intended by its creator its engineer its builder you are giving them a sort of a new purpose. So um, you're acting like, um, you know, you're, you are refunctionizing. I don't know if this word exists in English. You're refunctionizing an instrument. Um, of course, well, um, we can talk about no input music uh, and feedbacks, etc., etc. Uh, I'm in, in this episode, of course, I'm specifically talking about electronic no-input techniques. So you, 
of course, you can create no input uh, music even in an uh, electroacoustic environment. Um, so you can create feedbacks and modulate feedbacks uh, um, in an acoustic environment. Um, and this is uh, another topic with uh, other consequences uh, and etc. So yeah, uh, in this episode, I'm not gonna um, uh, not gonna take a look at that side of no input techniques. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is a really a, a world uh, in this uh, little this 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 little niche. It seems a little niche, but actually, it, it touches all the different topics of. Um, a certain way of making electronic music uh, in, and contemporary music uh, and contemporary composition. Um, so yeah, was uh, yeah. Um, this is one of the possible approaches, uh, and you are using an instrument and changing its function and developing a new one, uh, starting from this technique. This is something really interesting as many of the of the things that happens with the electronic gear is that uh, you use what uh, they build for you. So no input techniques has uh, a lot in common for example with the circuit bending. And of course you can consider no input music as a sort of circuit bending. Uh, what's circuit bending? Just for the people who don't know. Um, circuit bending is when you take some consumer electronics product that, that makes sounds, like for example toys uh, or uh, yeah, radios, uh, everything that it's like consumer electronics. You open them and you change the circuit of uh, these electronic devices to create new sounds. So you are sort of discovering something new inside of the circuit that was not meant to be uh, discovered in a certain way. Uh, you are connecting points into the circuit that are not supposed to be connected. And you are creating new sound, glitches, uh, distortions, uh, uh, changes in the pitch of uh, the sounds, if there are any samples, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, that's uh, that's really um, something that has in a lot in common with the no input mixing techniques, because of course you are using a circuit and you are connecting points that are not supposed to be connected. So you are connecting the output, for example, of your mixer with the inputs and sending the signal back again to create a feedback. Yeah. That's one of the topic. So of course, if there are any questions, as usual, I'm going uh, uh, free speech. Uh, so of course, feel free to interrupt me and to ask questions if you have any doubt uh, and if I'm skipping uh, uh, or you know I'm talking about a thing that uh, it's not clear. Let me know. Let me know in the chat, obviously. Um, well, let's take a listen to another couple of minutes from uh, No Input Mixing Board and then we will go on with the next listening. Thank you. 
yeah, uh, as I said, there is this deep connection between uh, no input music, circuit bending, and this idea of uh, reusing and giving a new function to to an electronic device. Um, I found this thing really fascinating. For me, it's one of the most interesting thing. Uh, I can talk about my experience, for example. I I use only broken mixers or uh, not completely functional mixers. Um, most of them are found in the trash or are, you know, bought for a couple of bucks because they were half broken. Um, and that's something that I found really fascinating because uh, uh, every mixers, even with the, uh, you know, it's uh, dust in the circuits, it's broken channels, etc., has its own sound. So all the life and all the, you know, the problems that that mixer have on a technical level, it's a resource and it's a, a very fundamental part of its own sound. And I think this is this is super nice because it's like using these mixers for making music, it's giving them a new life. It's using something that was supposed to be thrown away for creating something new. <laughs> Where do you find them? Uh, well, it depends. <laughs> After so many years of working with mixers and with no input mixing, um, techniques. Uh, most of my friends uh, knows that I, I'm always looking for broken stuff, uh, broken mixers. So most of the time they just uh, bring them to me. Uh, but of course you can simply go to you know a thrift store or go into a music store with where they sell used instruments and uh, ask if they have something broken that they are not really sure to sell because it's uh, it's kind of you know they need to repair it but they are not sure because probably it's uh, it costs more to repair a broken mixer than selling it especially if it's an old one because repairing a mixer it's really a huge work uh, recapping and so Changing all the capacitors, for example, inside of a mixer is a huge work because there are a lot of them for every channel. So the huger the mixer, uh, the more the work to fix it if it's broken. So yeah, usually you can just go there in the music store and ask, uh, yeah, do you have some mixer that you are not uh, willing to repair? Maybe I can buy it for, I don't know, symbolic... Uh, <laughs> price yeah sometimes you just found them in in the trash <laughs> um, let's go with the second listening of course here time flies uh, half an hour is gone just with the first example um, so the next uh, listening I want to to show you is um, A composition, a composition by Marco Ciciliani, who is an electronic musician and composer, contemporary composer. Um, also, this one is a rather old performance. This is really 2001. Oh, live recording 2005. Yeah, so the composition is from 2001. As you can see, the um, no input mixing techniques uh, started to be very popular uh, in the late 90s and early 2000. Um, especially it started to become really popular uh, with the Japanese scene, like for example, Toshimaru Nakamura is one of the, one of, um, you know, the most famous even in Western countries, uh, composer like uh, Merzbo, etc. 
in the Japanese, in the noise scene in Japan, uh, they used a lot of no input uh, uh, techniques uh, to create, of course, that kind of uh, music. And yeah, it's something that uh, also was uh, spread uh, to Western countries uh, uh, with Pulse Demon um, from Mersbo that uh, came, you know, in the early 2000s, I guess. I don't remember the year of Pulse Demon. Let me check. I'm super curious. Uh, Pulse Demon... Uh, oh. 1996. Yeah. Late 90s. <laughs> Fun fact. Uh, Pulse Demon, which is uh, probably the m most famous Arch Noise uh, album ever, uh, was released by a metal label. <laughs> uh, extreme metal, like, death black metal label. <laughs> In, uh, in Western countries, in Europe and in America. Um, so yeah, no input techniques started to become really spread and popular uh, in the late 90s and early 2000. Uh, and of course, you can think about them always connected to, you know, improvisation music uh, and the noise music and very rough uh, and raw and uh, disturbing type of things. Uh, and always connected to improvisation because, of course, you are using a mixer to create music and it's not supposed to work like that and you are not able to control it completely because feedbacks uh, are free to move inside of the circuit and uh, obviously changing a little movement uh, of a knob uh, or changing the position of a fader can uh, really upset everything in your sound, uh, can really sculpt it and uh, change it radically. Um, but yes, you can also compose for no input uh, mixing boards. And this is the case. Uh, Marco Ciciliani made this uh, composition. As you can see here, uh, there are also the scores. He's reading the scores. So I think we are going to take a listen to this composition called Mask by Marco Ciciliani, and then we are going to talk about it. Uh, this is a very different uh, approach to no input mixing techniques. So yeah, there is a lot to say. Mask by Marco Ciciliani.
let's leave uh, a little bit in the background uh, the performance and yeah brumata that's uh, that's really a virtuoso performance actually uh, because of course he is following a score this is not improvised this is uh, composed and prepared and uh, yeah <laughs> as i said this is virtuoso stuff <laughs> actually um uh, let me check the the uh, is there ever a moment in creation where nothing is simped out right well actually mm, it's super difficult to recreate stuff in no input uh, mixing techniques you can do it there are a couple of uh, rules uh, uh, and there are a couple of things that uh, works mostly most of the times but um, yeah one of the main features of no input mixing uh, techniques is unpredictability uh, as i said you are forcing the circuit to make something that is not supposed to do so for example your interface uh, like in this case the mixer faders and knobs uh, your interface is not connected exactly to the sound result. So it's not like in a piano that you, if you hit the same key two times, it makes the same note two times. Uh, for example, in nano, in, in nano input mixers, um, if you change the position of a knob or of a fader, most of the time it doesn't make the same sound result. So yeah, as I said, this is a uh, an amazing virtuoso performance. Uh, I strongly, if you are into this kind of stuff, I strongly suggest you to watch all the performance because, yeah, it's something uh, I'm working on this stuff uh, since uh, like uh, I was uh, a little boy. And yeah, this is impressing also for me. Yeah, anyway, yeah, you need to be very, very careful uh, with uh, every action when you're working with no input mixers. Super agree, Brumata. That's a really good point. Yeah. And it's probably the same operation that uh, Marco Ciciliani is doing in this performance. He set up uh, the mixer before the performance with all the channels uh, and all the interaction between the feedbacks because, of course, um, feedbacks inside of a mixer can interact with each other and create different sound results. So he probably prepared the, the palette uh, of this palette of chaotic sounds and like filtered the possibilities to a couple of uh, well not really here there are not just a couple here there are a lot of different actions and uh, movements uh, connected to the performance so yeah but of course you are kind of on the way of creating an organized chaos performance um so yeah I really love this stuff, actually. It's just, for me, it's uh, super interesting. Um, so yeah, unpredictability. This is one of the main topic of uh, no input techniques. Um, the results are not connected directly to the action. So most of the time when you are um, playing uh, with no input techniques, uh, you are forced to react to the sound that happens uh, when you do an action so it's a sort of uh, relationship between uh, the instrument that has its own will its own not really will will it's uh, not really the right term but it's uh, it has its own uh, way of working and you the performer uh, or the composer, in this case it's composer and performer. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is this connection between uh, the instrument that works in its own way and you as a performer and as a composer that has to face this um, behavior of the instrument itself. So uh, there is this sort of uh, <laughs> uh, strange relationship, but really deep and uh, really fundamental connection between um, the machine and the man. <laughs> and uh, the connection is really important and uh, it's uh, part itself of the concept of playing no input techniques. Um, this is why it's annoying when people gripe about uh, where's the intent in music like this. <laughs> intent is everywhere, exactly. This is super conceptual in a certain way. But at the same time, and this is my opinion, it can be also super uh, emotional and super, uh, uh, you know, in instinct related. Uh, here you have like uh, something that is not completely under your control. So you are transforming this chaotic matter into something that can... You, you are, there is this attempt to, you know, to to put it uh, in a structure, to put it in a cage, uh, uh, but it's not possible to do it. It's not like in normal music that you have structures, you have notes, uh, you have uh, instruments, you have timbers. Here you have uh, something that is out of your control. And you are trying to connect with something that is out of your control and use this thing to create a composition. This is super intentional, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and it's super intentional and at the same time it's super related to instinct and to action and reaction. And this is one of the other themes of uh, no input techniques that is improvisation. Because of course there is a certain degree of improvisation also in this performance by Marco Ciciliani. Yes, there is a score, obviously, but there is a four-page score and uh, <laughs> I I would be curious, I, I, I'm super curious, uh, probably I can try to ask him if he can, if he still has that uh, score and try to send it to me. Hmm, that can be interesting. <laughs> Marco Ciliani uh, teaches at uh, the Graz uh, University, uh, where I had a masterclass last year in October about no input techniques. So probably I can also get in touch with him and get in direct contact and ask for for this score. It will be super interesting, actually. Um, anyway, 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 this is another approach to no input techniques, composition. Let's take a listen to a couple more minutes and then we will move to the next uh, listening.
Yeah, Gem, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. It's a, an half hour long performance and I strongly suggest you to watch it all. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that's super interesting. Um, that's a super interesting idea, Gem. Um, actually, it's also... I think it's... Uh, <laughs> in this era of uh, the infinite uh, reproduction of every media... Uh, this is something that is more connected to an ancient way of making music than to a modern one. Uh, in ancient times, uh, if there was a song, uh, like for example, I don't know, I'm, I'm speaking any any type of music that was created before, you know, the invention of the wax cylinder for recording and reproducing music and playing music, uh, all even, of course, everything that uh, was invented after the wax cylinders. Um, before that time, every song, even if it's the same song with the same chords, same uh, rhythm, etc., etc., every time that you play that song it's a new production of that song it's not a reproduction um, so it slightly changes if you play a song two times in a row for example or of course if two different peoples play the same song in two different moments and uh, playing with no input uh, techniques uh, has that specific quality. So playing the same thing two times can give you different result. So every new production is not a reproduction, it's something new. That's super, super interesting. Totally. Yeah, true, true. And of course, um, I'm totally agree, Steeples. And of course, uh, with no input mixers, it's even more clear, this idea. Because of course, yeah, you can buy the same synthesizer and make it sound different from another person. But here, the, the, the thing is more radical because uh, also the same mixer cannot sound the same way in two different uh, situations. So, yeah. Um, and that is a fundamental part of your composition if you play with no input techniques yeah. deep topics here today deep topics I'm so sorry to, to not have um, um, a guest today but I think we are having again uh, an interesting uh, Sunday talk 
<laughs> about contemporary music. So thanks everyone for for being here. Really, uh, it's super appreciated, and uh, I I really love that you are interacting in this way. Uh, we are talking and we are uh, discussing about this topic in a super interesting way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's move on to the next next example, the uh, next listening that I choose um, for today's episode. Thank you, Marco Ciciliani. Amazing. Um, so yeah, this is the composed way of using no input techniques. Uh, the controlled way but of course there is the other side uh, and the other side is uh, like uh, using no input mixers and no input techniques uh, to create uh, something out of structures out of uh, uh, you know limits uh, uh, just as a an improvisation tool and in this case if you decide to use just uh, just uh, this approach to no input techniques, uh, of course, um, you have uh, different results from what we heard uh, in this case, in these first two cases. Because of course, both uh, Toshimaru Nakamura and Marco Ciciliani are composers, so this composition can be played again, not only reproduced by YouTube, obviously. Uh, but of course, there is a super deep connection with improvisation because, of course, uh, interacting with a no input uh, instrument is uh, much more easy, obviously, when you improvise. So you are acting and reacting to what happens uh, uh, sound wise. Um, educational and entertaining. Thank you very much. That's uh, that's uh, really a compliment to me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I could go on about this forever in generative model. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, I think we had a discussion about generative music. No input music is generative music. In a certain way, yes, it is. Because... Um, you are not really creating what happens. <laughs> you are just interacting with parameters. Um, but the sound is there. And it's uh, self-oscillating, so it's autonomous. <laughs> so, next example. Um, this is um, an improvisation, very short. So we will take a super... Uh, short listening and listen to it all uh, by Sarah Bell Reed. Uh, she's a Canadian composer uh, and YouTuber um, and uh, yeah, trumpet player. Um, she 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 works really well with this kind of stuff. And yeah, I decided to choose one uh, one of his improvisation with an no input mixer. So Sarah Bell Reed. No input mixer sketch number one.
Yeah, that was uh, a super quick um, improvisation on Anno input mixers, uh, on Anno input mixer. Um, yeah, there is also this approach to no input mixing techniques. Um, having uh, just this instrument under your hands and uh, acting and reacting to what happens. Um, improvisation is a huge part uh, when we are talking about no input techniques. Uh, just for the reasons I told you at the beginning of the live stream. So, of course, the, um, the interface between uh, you as a performer and the instrument is not uh, logic. There is no logic, no straight forward logic. There is no connection between uh, a movement of a fader or of a knob and the sound. Um, if you press a button, for example, in this mixer, um, but, you know, there are different uh, positions in the other faders, it's probably uh, easy to have uh, two different results when you press the button twice <laughs> than having the same result. Uh, so improvisation is really an important thing when we are talking about no input techniques. Um, most of the people who works with this kind of stuff uh, use improvisation as a composition tool, uh, which is personally something that I really like. And it's also my way of working with no input uh, mixing techniques. Um, also because I love improvisation, not only in this field, but in every other musical field. So I'm most of the projects that I have are improvising, uh, impro improvisational projects. Um, like, for example, Little Electronic, if you don't know them. It's a collective based on improvisation. So yeah, improvisation is a huge part in no input mixing techniques. Uh, and it goes uh, in parallel with the uh, composition. Um, it's uh, something that really needs uh, to be considered when you are uh, facing an instrument with no input techniques. Is there another way besides improvisation for composition in this element? Yes, it is. Mm, we saw, of course, the first two examples of today's episode are compositions. So, yeah, you can reproduce stuff. And there are certain rules. If you want, we can go a little bit more technical. Uh, like, for example, I don't know, speaking about uh, no input, a no-input mixer like the one that we are watching here. Um, if you connect uh, one of the outputs to one of the input and send the signal back, you create a feedback. With uh, the EQ section of that channel that you are using, you can shape the um, pitch of the feedback. So you can basically find a sort of uh, mm, rule. Yeah, it's a sort of rule that of course, with that section of the mixer, you can uh, change the tone and the note of your feedback. Um, so this is, for example, um, a thing that you can use for reproducing uh, a composition, a specific composition. Um, or, for example, the use of buttons, uh, like here in the mixer, um, that uh, Sarah is using, uh, uh, you can see there are buttons. Buttons are really useful because they allows you to move from one situation where the feedback is uh, doing that specific sound to another one and going and go back to the same uh, to the first um, sound result. So, for example, if you decide to 
compose something on an input mixer, you can use all these little details and all these little um, uh, tricks. They are not tricks, actually. They are techniques um, to, um, to be sure to reproduce the same result. Um, for example, in, in most of the mixers, most of the times, um, the zero gain level uh, has uh, on the knobs or on the faders as a sort of uh, of step when you turn the knob. And you can use that step as a composition tool to be able to go back from one sound result to another one and you are sure that you will go back to that specific one. Of course, it's super important uh, to have um, preparation. So first of all, you need to prepare your mixer uh, and uh, to prepare it uh, very precisely. But yeah, um, it's super possible to compose things for no input mixers. For example, mm, my album, The Inner Shore, uh, was completely composed and uh, I can reproduce most of the things that happened in that album um, because yeah I decided to take an approach uh, very very specific uh, and yeah you can use um, a lot of um, strategies to create a composition that can be reproduced. So it's not only improvisation. There is always a certain degree of improvisation, obviously, because sometimes a mixer, a mixer or a no-input instrument do what it wants <laughs> without considering you and your ideas and your preparation. But yeah, obviously, you can create some sort of uh, compositions. Uh, the next uh, listening, uh, it's uh, another one that can give you um, an idea of composition uh, with no input mixing techniques. The, the next listening is from uh, um, this channel that I consider one of the best ones. Uh, about no input mixing techniques uh, um, and composition. Uh, this video is rather old from 2010. And um, but yeah, mm, closed circuits. Go there and subscribe if it's possible. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they are great. Uh, it's a duo. Uh, no input techno using two mixers with six straight no effects feedback loops. A bit of EQ and compression was added afterwards to make it speaker friendly. Excessive low frequencies feedback can occur as a metronomic ticking, which can then be used to modulate other feedback channels. In the video, Behringer MX 1604A uses two feedback loops to act as the drum machine, which is fed into MX2442, the ladder mixer, as four feedback loops, bass, melody, note, rhythmic ping, type sound of, etc, uh, etc, etc. Et um, so in this case, you can see the mixer and the feedbacks created with no input techniques are conceived and are thinked as a specific part of the composition. And that's a, a, a thing that I always do. So for example, I use a, a mixer for making rhythms. You can create a lot of rhythms and polyrhythms with no input mixing techniques and it's super fun to do it. Um, and another, I use another mixer for a bass line. I use another mixer for making uh, a chord because of course you can create chord. If you create uh, different feedbacks uh, on different and tune them in different notes, you can create a chord with a no input mixer. Uh, so yeah, you can basically create the structure uh, of your composition, thinking about uh, every single feedback or instrument as one instrument 
on a classical composition like rhythm section, melodic session, harmonic session, etc. 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 And that's also another strategy to to use no input techniques. So let's take a listen to no input beats by closed circuits. How should we start with that?
And that was No Input Beats by Closed Circuits. Uh, yeah, super nice performance. And as you can see, in this case, you can create something really musical in a certain way. So there are very different outputs from No Input Music. <laughs> Sorry for the joke, the pun. Uh, there are very different outputs from super abstract ones and super... Uh, like like super clean and aesthetically precise ones, like for example in uh, Toshimaru Nakamura production, or super abstract and uh, very you know conceptual, like in uh, Marco Siciliani Mask's composition. Uh, but also it can be very musical in a certain way if you start conceiving uh, no input mixers and feedbacks as instruments on their own. Uh, that you can use uh, as part of a composition. Um, well, uh, now I can probably... I don't know. Well, yeah. Let's drop... Uh, always uh, speaking about... Uh, thinking about mixers as specific instruments in a composition. I can drop a video uh, from my... Album the inner shore maybe yeah. Let's try it. Um, also in this case I'm using the mixers as uh, specific instruments. There is a mixer uh, dedicated to creating the rhythm. There is a mixer. Uh, dedicated to create the melody and one to the harmony. So, um, yeah, this is Goods Cast Their Shadows Over the Earth uh, from my album The Inner Shore. This is the video recording of the recording session. Um, in that album, every track is recorded live, so they are live performances. Um, Goods cast their shadows over the earth.
Yeah, and that was uh, Good's Caster, Shadows of the Earth. Um, in this case, as you can see from the video, I'm using all the little techniques that I talked about before the starting of the video. Uh, so using a lot of buttons to um, to create this structured composition, using a lot of the buttons in the mixers to pass from one sound result to the other and going back, muting and unmuting channels uh, to you know to create uh, space uh, or to add elements uh, and uh, having the same uh, sound result every time so yeah there are a lot of uh, different type of uh, possible techniques to create a composition based on no input mixers uh, it's not just of course just improvisation um, yeah um, but uh, I think uh, we can end this stream with one last listening. Uh, it's the last one that I choose for today. Uh, yeah, we saw a lot of videos today and listened to a lot of music made by one single person, except for the closed circuit one, uh, who was made by two persons. Um, but there are, of course, uh, they are very few, of course, but there are also no input examples. This is a project uh, called exactly No Input Ensemble, and uh, it's an improvisation project collective uh, with a director. Uh, I think it's it, it works with conduction, but I I need to, you know to research a little bit more uh, with conduction techniques uh, that are some specific techniques created. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a long story and uh, we can uh, go a little bit deeper in, probably in the future about conduction techniques for improvisation. Uh, we can probably dedicate uh, a full episode to improvisation. <laughs> that will be... <laughs> super interesting and uh, yeah i need to find a lot of guests for that one because uh, of course i'm into improvisation since uh, when i started making music so <laughs> uh anyway yeah um no input ensemble this is um a concert a live concert and um, yeah we'll take a listen to to this uh different approach to no input music and uh, in this case there are many many people playing no input instruments fiber by no input ensemble
flüchtige Kletterer. Waghalsige Alpinisten. Nichts ist unmöglich. Erhabenheit Gehorsam Vorwärts So tolle kann es nicht kommen dass ich meinem Vater Schande machte. Was mir befohlen wird, das tue ich. Eige soll mich nie einer nennen können. Wenn man strachs auf sein Ziel losgeht, geschieht einem am wenigsten was.
So yeah, uh, as you can see, even from this live performance, there are many, many ways of um, conceiving a composition with no input techniques. Uh, uh, in this case, of course, it's an ensemble and there is also a musician playing some vinyls, scratching and uh, samples, so yeah. Uh, there are really a lot of different ways. Uh, in this case, uh, there is also a conductor uh, who tells to the performer how to, you know, to create the composition. Um, but of course, we saw Nakamura, we saw Mark Ciciliani, we saw Closed Circuits and Sarah Bell Reed. There are so many different approaches to no input composition techniques. Uh, that yeah, the results are so vast and wide that yeah, <laughs> a lot of stuff to to discover here. <laughs> so yeah, if there are any questions uh, in the chat uh, to close this live stream, uh, I'm super happy to to answer and of course this was kind of an introduction uh, with a couple of listenings and examples to uh, to, to no input uh, music uh, they are all very different from each other actually um, of course I can make uh, even more in-depth uh, looks at some of this composition or to no input uh, techniques so yeah for example how to create a feedback or how can you use a feedback in a composition how can you use a no input mixer in your compositions let me know obviously we can program them and schedule them for the future um, <laughs> if you are interested in them obviously um, anyway yeah i think that was a good overview a good first sight on the world on no input of no input music. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm interested in all. <laughs> Great. Uh, so yeah, I need to. <laughs> yeah, a lot of topics. Totally agree. Thanks everyone for watching. So, and uh, thanks for enjoying. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> I really love this stuff, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. That's it for today. I hope to see you, well, tomorrow. Uh, with another episode of the silent world so tomorrow i'm gonna um, i'm gonna play a live soundtrack on a silent movie uh, it's at uh, 7 p.m utc i don't know your time zone but yeah i will post something on instagram with the you know the countdown counter so you can you know set a reminder with that one and it will automatically translate it to your time zone um, and uh, of course I remember you the weekly schedule on Monday there is the silent movies uh, with the live soundtrack the, seri the series is called the silent world and then on Wednesday um, there is under the label uh, where we discover and listen to the releases of uh, an experimental music label every week and then the day after that one uh, there is mm, am i better now uh, a production session um, where i mix and remix uh, old mixes or work on new tracks etc 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 and then on friday there is the live concerts at 9 p.m utc so playing here in the studio on my own or with other people with guests um, in real life here in the studio or online and then on sunday yeah there is this 
episodes of uh, Contemporary Music Talks. So, of course, if you like what I do, yeah, don't forget to follow the channel and uh, to check the schedule for being updated. Uh, I, I'm also on all the platforms, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I have also a Patreon if you want to support my work. Uh, I'm, I'm publishing new contents every week on Patreon. Uh, so yeah, if you are interested in sample packs, uh, previews uh, of videos and albums uh, and um, collective projects, uh, go and check it out. Uh, all the links are in the down here somewhere. And um, yeah, I think that's it for <laughs> the announcements, <laughs> the streamer announcement that I'm not used to do. Thanks everyone again for watching and for enjoying. It was super nice and I hope to see you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Take care of yourself and stay safe. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.